Let's factor negative 12y cubed plus 12y squared plus 45y. We're going to begin by looking for our common factors. So we can note, first of all, that because this leading term is negative, one thing we can do is to factor out a negative value. We also note that we have a 12, a 12, and a 45. There's a common factor of 3 with those three numbers. We also note y cubed, y squared, and y has a common factor of y, leading us to the ability of factoring out a negative 3y from all three terms. Let's see what's left. If we take negative 3y to come back at and end up with a negative 12y cubed, we would need to multiply by 4 and then by y squared. Because we're factoring out a negative, we're going to need to have a negative sign in between the next two terms to end up with a positive when we multiply through. 3 times 4 will end up giving us a 12, and y times y gives us y squared. And finally, factoring out a negative 3 from our last term is going to give us a negative 15, and if we factor out the y, we're not left with a y value. So this ends up being the first step in our factorization. This factor, negative 3y, will continue throughout all of the next steps. But what we really need to concentrate on right now is factoring this trinomial. We have 4y squared minus 4y minus 15. We're going to need to look at factoring this so we end up with a product of two binomials. Now, what we're interested in doing is trying to decide what values will go into these blanks. We can do so by looking at our various combinations. So we're going to look at the combinations we can come up with in order to end up with 4y squared. So just as an aside, what we're going to do is take our 4y squared and note that we could have 4y multiplied times y, or we could have 2y multiplied times 2y. Now we're going to look at our last term, which is a value of negative 15. We note that we have various combinations that can happen there. To end up with negative 15, we could have a negative 1 times 15. We could have a 1 times negative 15. We could have a 3 times negative 5. Or we could have a negative 3 times 5. We need to come up with a way of looking at all of these various combinations in order to see which one actually will give us our middle term of negative 4y. So we're going to do it in kind of a chart format. Let's start off with the 4y times y, and we're going to look at our various combinations for our values that will give us our negative 15. So we could have 4y minus 1 times y plus 15. We could have 4y plus 1 times y minus 15. I'm just going down the row here. I could have 4y plus 3 times y minus 5. Or I could have 4y minus 3 times y plus 5. Now remember that 4y times y was not our only choice for what happens in order to end up with 4y squared. We could also have had our 2y multiplied times 2y. We now need to put all four combinations into this setup. So we could have 2y minus 1 times 2y plus 15. We could have 2y plus 1 times 2y minus 15. We could have 2y plus 3 times 2y minus 5. Or we could have 2y minus 3 multiplied times 2y plus 5. Now at this point, we know that any of these combinations are going to end up giving us the first and the last terms correctly. In other words, we know that 4y times y is going to give us 4y squared. We know that the minus 1 times 15 is going to give us our negative 15. What we're really interested in is what happens with the outer and the inner terms when we multiply. Our outer term here is going to give us a plus 60y. Our inner term gives us a minus 1y. And we can see that this is not going to work because we cannot combine these two terms in order to give us our negative 4y. So given that we know that our first and last terms are good to go, I'm going to concentrate only on evaluating the outer and the inner terms.
In this case, I would end up with a negative 60y plus 1y. That does not combine in order to give us our negative 4y. In our next entry, we would end up having a negative 20y plus 3y. That's not going to give us our negative 4y. In our next term, multiplying our outer terms would give us a positive 20y, and the inner term would be a minus 3y. That's 17y, and that's not going to work. In our next entry, we have 2y times 15. That's going to give us 30y minus, our inner term would give us minus 2y. That's not going to be negative 4y. Our next entry, we'd have a 2y times negative 15, which would be negative 30y plus 2y. That will not give us our negative 4y. In our next entry, we have our 2y times negative 5, which is negative 10y, plus 3 times 2y, which is plus 6y. And notice that this is the one that actually is going to give us the correct middle term. Now, just to double check, let's just note that in our next problem that we have here, we could have 10y minus 6y, and that would give us a positive 4y, not the negative. So this is going to be the combination that's going to work, which means that we can go back up to our problem where we had the negative 3y as our common factor, and we can write in our 2y times our 2y to give us our 4y squared, and we determined that this had to be our plus 3 and our minus 5 in order to give us the correct value for our last term of negative 15 and our outer term of negative 10y, our inner term of positive 6y.